Hi. Let's go over some significant figures and scientific notation. I actually wanted to start off by this little meme I like this one when the whole fuck class fights whether that was correct, but your answer is totally crazy. <laughs> Um, so for significant figures, this is something that I, it really eludes a lot of students, but it's really all about how precise a number is. When you're actually uh, like in a science class, let's say like in my physics class or in, you know, maybe chemistry or something like that, when you're measuring uh, data, you have to know how precise that number is. Now, um, a nice easy trick at least is, is something like this, that the zeros to the left are not significant. So we, we don't count zeros to the left of a number, but the zeros to the right are significant. There's a bit of ambiguity here that's not exactly correct all the time, but we'll see about that in a second. And if you're really not sure what to do, uh, a nice little trick here is to make a non-zero sandwich, and I'll explain that right here. So what do I mean by this? Let's look at these significant figures already. So this one right here, 25.30. The fact that there's a zero tells us we know something more about this value. It's more precise. So see, zeros to the right are significant. That means I'm going to count all of them. So two, five, three, zero, all four are significant. So that means there's going to be four significant figures. Now I'm writing it like this, like four SF for short for significant figures. Okay, point zero two. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but the we don't have to count the zeros to the left. Um, and that's because this is just telling us where the decimal is. It's not necessarily telling us about the precision because this, what I like about this is that when we use scientific notation, it makes it much more clear. That's actually why I really like scientific notation. It removes the ambiguity in how precise something is. But in this case right here, then we should not count the zero to the left. So we count just the one. So it would be one significant figure. It's only that one. Here, all four are significant. Here, just that one is. Okay, so that would be the answer here, at least. This would be how many significant figures we have. How about 700? 700, well, we count the ones to the right, but here there's a bit of ambiguity because it's hard to tell exactly, but we'll just count as three significant figures for now. Uh, now, when I talked about this non-zero sandwich, what did I mean? Here is what I mean. You find the leftmost non-zero number, which is this one, it's the eight. You look for the rightmost non-zero number, which is the five. See, there's no more, you know, if there's lots of zeros over here, lots of zeros to the left. And I make a sandwich, so to speak. I count all of them. So one, two, three, four, five. I count all five of them. So there's five significant figures. Now I like to tell you a little kind of pro tip. On an exam, if you're not otherwise told, use three significant figures. That's important. All right, so let's move on. Let's go to scientific notation. Well, I've already trained you on uh, how to use a non-zero sandwich, so let's see what I mean by that. So to write to this, the reason why we do this is actually being used in order to write really big or really small numbers, like something like this. Something like this right here is kind of annoying to write. Something like this is a bit annoying to write out, especially if there's way more zeros to the left or to the right. So there's a really compact way of writing it, and that's this scientific notation. Now, we tend to write it in this form. Uh, we write it like this, a times 10 to the k. That's actually what it's sort of known as. This right here is going to be um, a number, so we're going to have to determine what a is, and we're going to have to find what k is. Uh, now, there's some stipulations about them that, you know, they should be, uh, you know, numbers. They're allowed to be negative or positive. It's supposed to be, you know, between 1 and uh, 10. So I could write it like this, actually. So A needs to be between 1 and 10. It can be 1, uh, but between 1 and 10 can't be equal to 10. And this here is an exponent. It could be positive or negative here. So could A. So let's actually see what we do with this. First step is to make a non-zero sandwich. So again, in this example right here, let's see, right here, a non-zero sandwich, let's use this step right here. Over here, this big giant number right here, well, the leftmost non-zero number is this one. The rightmost non-zero number is the four. So I'm gonna count all of them. That means I'm gonna write all of these numbers here. These are all significant. You see, when we write it in scientific notation, it has to mean the same thing as this big gross number. We just wanna make it compact. So. The most compact way to do it, let's write down all these significant numbers here. So 3, 5, 2, 8, 0, 4. Now, we put a decimal after the first number. So what does that mean? Well, I have to make A between 1 and 10. Right now, A is huge. So I put a decimal after the first number. See, that's I've done the second step. Then I have to do the exponent to move the decimal as needed. What does that mean? Well, I want to write it as times 10 to the power of something. That's my goal here is to write it like this. But I got to figure out what that something is. 
See, I got to figure out that exponent. So let's take a look here. Now, this has to be the same number as this. Right now, they're totally different. So what do I do? Well, I look at where is the decimal really right now? Well, the decimal really right now is actually here. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. Maybe I'll do it like in purple. So the decimal really right now is here. That's where it really is. But I've artificially put it here. So what do I have to do? I have to say, well, how many times 10, how many powers of 10 do I have to do to move my decimal where I artificially put it to where it really is? So what I do is I count. Each power of 10 is one more exponent. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the right. Because I went 10 to the right, this is 10 to the 10. I'm done. This is in scientific notation. This is as compact as I can write it. Okay, so that is my answer in scientific notation. Let's do the next one. This one right here, again, I make a non-zero sandwich, so I'm going to count the 2, 1, 8, 7. So I'm going to write all those numbers, 2, 1, 8, 7. I'm going to put a decimal after the first number. Oh, okay, so it's 2.187. And then I have to say times 10 to the power of. Now, really, right now, the decimal is actually here. Well, it's really there. I've artificially put it here. So I have to count how many I have to go to the left. So you notice I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left in order to move it. Well, 4 to the left, if you remember your rules of exponents, it's going to be a 4, yes, but it's going to be a minus. A minus means you go to the left. What this means is this is a small power of 10. So this is you know, something to negative exponent. It really means you divide by big powers of 10. So there we go. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, why is scientific notation helpful? By the way, I like this one when you solve a problem three times, get a different answer. Why is it helpful? Well, we write very large, very small numbers. We can know something about the precision. I mean, and why should you care? Well, I like this because we can actually write, like, there's big numbers, like there's the speed of light. How fast does light travel? Well, it turns out it goes 300,000 kilometers in one second. Now, that's a lot of zeros to write. So we actually write it just 3 times 10 to the 8. Of course, it's in meters per second. Uh, that's that one. Uh, we might want to know about Avogadro's number, which is in chemistry. Right? The speed of light is in physics. Uh, Avogadro's number, well, we might want to know, um, let's see, we call it Na usually for Avogadro. Um, we might want to know the number of atoms in one mole, and that's what we have. So we have, there's 6.02, some people use 022 or 023, I'll just leave it as 6.02 times 10 to the, what is it, 23, uh, and it's atoms for every mole. And so that's one. By the way, do you want to know a really bad joke here? Uh, how does a chemist make uh, guacamole? They use Avogadro's. Uh, you know, there's other things like gravitational constant, for example. So in physics, we have this capital G. Uh, Newton figured this out. So it's, uh, you know, number 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I mean, it also has other units, right? There's Newton meters squared per, is it kilogram squared? I think that's it. Um, but okay, so we use it, we use scientific notation to write really big numbers like this one and this one, but also this is really, really small. This tells you something about how gravity is actually going to act. Um, this stuff obviously tells you lots about chemistry, about how things are going to bond and how things are going to join together. This tells you about, you know, speeds and galaxies and all sorts of crazy stuff that I like to talk about. Again, go to Stanova, you can see I've got lots of videos on physics showing you this. Uh, here's a pro tip, do not use calculator notation. So on your calculator, you might end up doing a calculation and maybe it tells you the answer is like, this is how it might look on your calculator. Do not write this on an exam or something like this. This is how your calculator writes it. This is a short form for your calculator. This really means 1.82 times 10 to the four. So this is how you should write it, not like this one right here, okay? So do not write it like this. By the way, on your own calculator, you can also see that there's a little uh, E symbol, at least. At least most of the calculators have that. The TIs certainly do. The TI-84, the TI-Inspire, those ones, those use this, this format here. So I hope you found that helpful. See you in the next video.